Hi guys. It is a hot, sticky, miserable day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this hot, sticky, nasty. It is Thursday, August 12th, uh, 2021. And uh, I'm taking a break from mowing the lawn from hell on this hot, miserable day before the latest Airbnbers show up to the tiny house and hanging out in the shade for a few minutes. So I guess I will finally get around to doing what I tried to do yesterday. I, I had a uh, secret mission to run off to yesterday. Sorry I missed you guys yesterday, but uh, I, had, uh, I had some business to attend to. <clears throat> yes, but anyway, I'm back on it. And I want to thank uh, alert listener uh, Bill G. Bill G is one of my regular contributors here. Uh, and I want to thank Bill G from finding this story slipped my right under my radar from good old CNBC. CNBC. Uh, you know, I've been talking about how the mainstream media has pretty much been ignoring this latest code red for humanity report from the IPCC, but hallelujah, from CNBC, from their, I guess, their sustainable future desk or something, their sustainable future desk, we finally have some good news from the sustainable future at the mainstream media. Take it away. Climate change is making people think twice about having children. All right, so what are the key points before we dive into this good news? Um, all right, key point number one, analyst at Morgan Stanley uh, said in a note to investors that the quote movement to not have children owing to fears over climate change is growing and impacting fertility rates quicker than any preceding trend in the field of fertility decline hallelujah and the other key point some people are choosing not to have children because they fear that doing so will amplify global warming while others are concerned about extreme weather events their children may have to endure and the knock-on effects the knock-on effects otherwise known as Mad Max and starvation the knock-on effects of, of the knock-on effects of having children in the 21st century is committing your children to Mad Max and starvation. Anyway, not sure CNBC gets that deep into it, but let's see what this is all about. I'm gonna put the link on here and you can read this good news for yourself. But while I'm enjoying this brief, brief respite in the shade, I'm gonna sit here and read it for you. <clears throat> A growing number of people are reluctant to bring a child into a world that is set to be ravaged by climate change in the coming decades. It comes shortly after the United Nations issued a code red for humanity as the world's leading climate scientists delivered their starkest warning yet about the deepening climate emergency. The IPCC changes report on Monday said global temperatures are likely to rise by one and a half degrees Celsius in the next two decades. Yes, exceeding a key target of the Paris Agreement, a landmark accord considered critically important. The Paris Climate Agreement is a landmark accord considered critically important to reduce the risk of a climate catastrophe. Yes. 
the Paris Agreement, a landmark accord considered critically important to reduce the risk of a climate catastrophe. That's like saying, uh, y y you know, putting a harness on S Sancho Panza's tail is reducing the risk of him catching a chipmunk with his mouth. Anyway, enough of the Paris Agreement. Moving on. Scientists' increasingly bleak outlook for the future of the planet is putting more and more people off having children. Analyst at Morgan Stanley, I just read that, um, talking, you know, what I just said, the movement to not have children owing to fears over climate change is growing and impacting fertility rates quicker than any preceding twin trend in the field of fertility decline. I wish they had put a link to that. Um, okay, to, sub all right. to support their argument, I guess they're talking about the Morgan Stanley report, to report, to support their argument, they pointed to surveys, academic research, and Google data that show climate change is directly and indirectly accelerating the decline in fertility rates. UCLA, UCLA researchers show that the number of births in the U.S. fell in the nine months after an extreme heat event, while a study of eight 15,000 couples in China last year showed that climate change and particulate pollution in particular was associated with a 20% increased likelihood of infertility bring on the increased likelihood of infertility. Some people are choosing not to have children because they fear that doing so will amplify global warming. So this is quoting the Morgan Stanley report, quote, having a child is seven times worse for the climate and CO2 emissions annually than the next 10 most discussed mitigants that individuals can do. Uh, thank you, Morgan Stanley. Okay, uh, again, you know, looking at, uh, once again, Morgan Stanley understanding that all of these other mitigation BS, you know, your little electric car, your vegan diet, your solar panels, flying less, all of that crap, combine all of that crap together, and it does not equal it does not equal the save the planet individual lifestyle choice uh, as having one, one less child. One fewer children, however you, the grammatical way to say that is. And it, of course it never says, how about having no children? Uh, they always phrase it as having one less child is is seven times uh, a, a bigger way to save the planet than all of this the the other next ten in a row. Uh, anyway, thank you for pointing that out. A Swedish study published in uh, IOP Science in 2017 found that having one fewer child per family could save approximately. 58.6 metric tons of carbon uh, each year in developed nations. But then, of course, they put this little uh, disclaimer on there about this weird, you know, I, I mentioned this uh, a few weeks ago about, uh, however, Kimberly Nicholas, one of that study's authors, said in an interview with Vox this year that reducing the population is not the way the clim to solve the climate crisis. Yes, and uh, quote, she's looking at it now, it's not really, that's not, you know, talking about the time frame 
uh, that, that's too far uh, at this point, the relevant time frame for actually stabilizing the climate, given that we have this decade to cut uh, emissions in half. Uh, but anyway, uh, other than that little uh, outlier, that, that whole thing was, was weird, that woman coming out and, and, and doing that backpedaling to confuse the data here. All right. Others are concerned about extreme weather events their children may have to endure and the likely knock-on effects. Crops could fail in some parts of the world, for example. I'm looking over here at my garden. My pole beans are on full wilt over there. I see in the hot sun, I need to turn on my drip irrigation on my pole beans. I can see them curling up in the heat out here. Um, we are under an extreme heat advisory in the Finger Lakes today. Okay, Daniel, a 35-year-old Brit who currently lives in Dubai, has been married to his partner for almost 12 years. They were open to the idea of having children earlier on in the relationship, but now they're less keen. Quote, this is Daniel. Uh, requesting that his surname be left out of the story over fears that he may be targeted online by people who disagree with him. Quote, over the last few years, the climate has definitely been a major contributor to us not wanting children. The couple who rely on air conditioning most of the year and like to travel have been looking for ways to significantly offset their carbon footprint. Quoting the non-father to never be, quote, we thought about it quite a lot and quickly realized that adding another human being to the world would have a huge environmental impact. Prince Harry said in 2019 that he and his wife, Meghan, were planning to have a maximum of two children, citing environmental concerns. Yes, two little royals. No, I guess they're no longer royals. The issues, the issue of bringing more people into a warming world is being discussed by people on social media with big followings. Uh, in a 2019 Instagram live stream to her one and a half million followers, AOC said, quote, basically, there is a scientific consensus that the lives of children are going to be very difficult. And it does lead, I think, young people to have a legitimate question. Is it okay to still have children? Thank you, AOC. I don't think AOC is a breeder. Please tell me AOC is not a breeder. Jessica Combs, a 39-year-old English teacher, told CNBC, quote, I refuse to bring children into the burning hellscape we call a planet. Thank you, English teacher Jessica Combs. I refuse to bring children into the burning hellscape we call a planet. Combs said she has always been unsure about having children on her own. Quote, now as I look at the state of the economy, shoddy global health care, and climate change, I feel like all my trepidation was well justified, she said. Yes. Some of those who already have children are also worried. Hmm, I think you should have thought about it before you had children. Anyway, the cat's out of the bag now. Some of those who already have children are also worried. Tom James, age 39, a managing partner at an advertising and PR firm, told NBC, told CNBC, quote, I had a major depressive episode last year based on existential angst over the world my children would be growing up in, close quote. James has two girls, age three and six. Quote, 
worrying about their future is a frequent trigger for me. I am constantly thinking about when it is going to be appropriate to dissuade them from having children of their own as I think we are really past the point of no return. You see a chippy or what? Go get a chippy like that. Of course, all right, you heard it here right on CNBC. Of course, if everyone stopped having children, then humanity would eventually cease to exist. Wow. I've never thought of this. Wow. Never have had the thought. Hmm. Of course, if everyone stopped having children, then humanity would cease to exist and the planet could get on with its business of recovering from this, recovering from the sixth mass extinction and clean up the mess that we left behind them. It'll take about 10 million years, but the, the sooner we cease to exist, I mean, Book Hermit's always pointing out this, the sooner that we cease to exist, the sooner our fellow earthlings can start recovering from the big cosmic mistake known as humans evolving on this planet. Anyway, a fringe group of anti-natalists believe that humanity eventually ceasing to exist should happen, but most people do not share this view. Hmm. Most people do not share the view that people, that the human race should stop breeding. A few people share the view that the human race needs to be sterilized, but anyway, we're just going to move on with the mainstream media here. Indeed, many people see having children as a fundamental human right. And one that can bring happiness and joy to families. However, the climate emergency is a result of an increase in greenhouse gas emissions from burning fossil fuels. I, I, I mean, I, I, let's read this one more time. The climate emergency is a result of an increase in greenhouse gas emissions from burning fossil fuels, not population growth. This was just CNBC reporting. Okay. I'm trying to go back to my logic class in, in college, in Logic 101. We kept this thing called a logic notebook. All right. And what we did, the assignment is every day, we had to go on the mainstream media. And what we had to do was find an article with, uh, was it called a logical fallacy or an illogical fallacy? We had to, uh, we had to highlight the quote and then, you know, dissect the quote and say why it is an illogical fallacy, otherwise meaning it's bullshit. Now, it's been too long, it's been 40 years since I was in there, so I don't know how many logical fallacies this quote is committing. Okay, let's change this. Uh, that would be like, an increase in chipmunk deaths from Sancho Panza's mouth is due to Sancho Panza's teeth, not because Sancho Panza was born. There you go. Anyway, we're going to move on from the illogical fallacies. All right. The IPCC's report warned that some of the climate changes researchers observed, such as continued sea level rise, were projected to be, quote, irreversible 
over hundreds of thousands, hundreds to thousands of years. I think Book Hermit was uh, one of the authors of the IPCC report. Their report also reaffirmed the urgent need for, quote, strong and sustained reduction of carbon emissions and other greenhouse gases to limit climate change. Yes, the code red for humanity. This is UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. He added, quote, the, this report must sound a death knell for coal and fossil fuels before they, before they, not the humans using them, destroy our planet. It is not the humans burning the coal and the fossil fuels that are destroying the planet. Okay. What is that? Uh, guns don't kill people. People do. Anyway, at present, even as policymakers publicly acknowledge the necessity of transitioning to a low carbon society, the world's dependency on fossil fuels is expected to get even worse, even worse in the coming decades. Okay. Uh, there you go. Uh, let's see if you enjoyed that story on CNBC. What else do we have here? If I know how to make the page go down. I don't get this, guys. I, I just don't understand sometimes how to make a page scroll down on this computer. Okay, here we go. Surging demand for renewables will boost these three metals, analysts predict. So, you know, this is talking about the more we move away from fossil fuels into these, quote, renewables, what it will do is make the surge in demand for these non-renewable metals to support the renewables. It is shifting the ecological footprint from one toe to the next. It is doing nothing to reduce the ecological footprint uh, by the energy source uh, energizing humanity. It's simply moving it from one toe to the next toe on the same footprint. So we have a problem switching from fossil fuels to renewables. It will do nothing to save the planet. How about UN climate report is our final wake up call. Yes, say environmental experts. Weren't they in 1989 calling that the whatever the UN report in 1989 was our final wake up call? Yes. And finally, Goldman Sachs names the electric vehicle makers it likes over the next few years. Yes. Goldman Sachs getting into the game of electric vehicles. I can't imagine why Goldman Sachs would be interested in electric vehicles saving the planet. I'm just totally mystified. Why would Goldman Sachs be cheering on electric vehicles? Uh, you know, I'm going to have to read that. I mean, I, I just, I, just I, I don't understand why Goldman Sachs would be cheerleading electric vehicles. Anyway, guys, I'm going to ponder why Goldman Sachs would be uh, cheering on electric vehicles while I get back to mowing the, get back to cranking up my gas-sucking lawnmower and, uh, mowing the grass while I still can.
Bye, guys.